reflections on that game because fortune swung one way and another didn't they yeah and we would have been satisfied with our performance bowling wise in the first innings and then unfortunately the batting didn't come up to scratch again reasonably satisfied second innings with theirs and then that last wicket pair um, how demanding given all that was the 255 target um, obviously it was going to be, we knew it was going to be a tough tough target there's yeah, it's never easy. I know it's been a low-scoring game, but if you're set the highest score in the inning in, of the game to chase in the last day, it's always going to be tough. But I think yeah, there probably wasn't some great cricket played from both teams on those first two days, and it probably didn't do justice to you know the wicket wasn't terrible. It was obviously a used wicket, so it was probably going to be a bit inconsistent and turn. But I think there was some it was a mixture of some very good cricket and some very poor cricket from from both teams. Um, but obviously we were. You know, we would have preferred to have chased 195. I think the last partnership was 50. 50. Yeah, that would have always been a lot nicer chasing <laughs> 195. But you know, in any innings, there's always going to be a partnership. And the way that uh, Craig and and Leachy batted at the end there was, you know, it showed us how you can actually play on that wicket. So, you know, we we were, you know, excited going into today. And it's always nice when you've got the likes of, you know, Nick Brown and and obviously Alistair Cook. They sort of settle your nerves. There's a couple of early scares at the start of the innings but you've got England's leading test run scorer out there you know it does sort of calm the changing room a little bit but speaking to some of the guys afterwards you know they said that they you know they were quite composed they felt comfortable you know waiting to go into bat so it's, it's a good sign for Essex. Indeed and only two games so far but we've shown the backbone of the uh, of the side haven't we in the batting that second innings performance against Lancashire last week when Dan Lawrence yeah. starred and then today with uh, you and Cookie um, out there doing the business um, the influence of Cookie got to mention that in this game yeah, he's been phenomenal hasn't he? Yeah he's, he's obviously a phenomenal person he's he's good to have around the change room he's obviously level-headed calm he scores bucket loads of runs which is always always helpful but I think in the last 18 months Essex as a side has started to like we've matured we've realized that we are a talented side I think we've always been talented but maybe we haven't the results haven't shown that. Um, so obviously Tendo taking over his captaincy and some of his knocks last year. I know the draw last week, Dan Lawrence was, you know, he batted like a seasoned professional. It was phenomenal innings. But it did have, um, it mirrored some of the innings from previous year where like you know, Tendo against Sussex got a uh, you know, game saving 140 odd. So you know, now we can draw on these experiences from the past. Hopefully that will place us in good stead for Division 1. It wasn't all about Cookie though, your own innings, so I've well, quite I think, had a well, substantial contribution there though, Tom. No, it's, yeah. it was nice obviously to get some runs and get the boys over the line. I think it would be nice if Cookie was there at the end as well, but he decided to pull a drag down to <laughs> mid-wicket. Um, but he, he laid the platform and I think, I know Brownie only got 35, but that was a, you know, a crucial, crucial 35. I think Cookie and himself put on 82, which, you know, in the grand scheme of things chasing 250s is huge you know the, they're seeing off the new ball their bowlers are getting tired and you know and it just gives us a greater chance so I think everyone contributed nicely and and Wags again I think needs a special mention for that six for yeah probably bowled us back into the bowled game us back into the game yeah exactly. yeah absolutely and enough just last thing for me I know Chris Hillwood has said we're not in the first division just to make up the numbers we want to compete I think this indicates that we are serious yeah, about the business doesn't it Somerset finished second last year and they're a very good side so you know we can take a lot of you know a lot of confidence going forward with this win so you know at no point we, we don't as we've said all through the pre-season you know we're not going to set targets as such we're not going to say we're going to win it we're not going to say where we're going to finish I think we just what's worked very well for us is we take each day as it comes and each game as it comes and where we where we finish we'll we'll find out in September.